Welcome to worship with us at West Branch United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Connie Markle, and I'm happy that you are joining us to worship our God. Nothing can stop us from worshiping and praising our God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a few announcements. General conference that was scheduled in May is postponed till next year. And last night, or last Sunday night, single board met. A decision was made to suspend or cancel all worship services in person, gatherings and small groups until further notice. We held single board and had confirmation class online on what's called Zoom call. We could see and hear each other, so that helps. We plan to send out a mini newsletter. It'll be mini because we won't have the activities we have scheduled. We will not have our pancake brunch next week. We will be having egg your yard and they'll be wearing protective gear. Please continue to give your tithes and offerings and pledges to our church. You can send them to West Branch United Methodist Church, Post Office Box 750, West Branch, Iowa 52358, or donate online. See our website or call the office if you have any questions about that. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh God, we gather from various places to worship you together. You said you have put your spirit within us and we shall live. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am life. Jesus called Lazarus to come forth, and he did. And Jesus still calls us today. West Branch United Methodist Church and Christians, come forth. Lord, we do lift your name on high. We love to sing your praises. In your name we pray, amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Coming from different places. The Holy Spirit wants to breathe new life within us. We come to worship seeking a hope that will endure. Amen. I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. 
Oh, the ground. 
please join me in the prayer for illumination. God, may we listen to your word with open ears and open hearts. Encourage our hearts, give us hope that will not disappoint, and strengthen our faith, we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is from Romans 5, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. May God bless the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Let us pray. God, we thank you that we can worship you wherever we are and whenever we can. Thank you for drawing us together and gathering us as your people. Thank you, God, for loving us, providing for us so many ways. And thank you for this, these words from Scripture that remind us that our hope is in you. Encourage us this day, we pray in your name. Amen. <clears throat> have you heard someone ask the question, why, lately? Maybe you have asked that question, why? Why this? Why that? Why this virus? Why do I have to stay home? Why does this have to change everything? We can't go to church. Kids are saying we can't go to school. We can't see our friends. We can't go out to eat or socialize together. We can't meet in small groups for Bible study or games, activities. Sometimes we can't go visit our loved ones. We can't go shopping at Crowded Closet and stuff, etc. And this week, we couldn't go volunteer at Crowded Closet to help them put things out on the floor. So we're disappointed, but I'm sure we'll get that rescheduled. We can't get our hair cut. We can't go to after school sports or Hawkeye games. Why? Why? Why did this happen? And when will it end? When will things get back to normal? Well, high school students planned trips to London and Costa Rica, I think. Costa Rica over spring break. Their plans changed all of a sudden. Rescheduled and hope they can go on their trips then when they are rescheduled. A couple was to get married here in town last Sunday afternoon. But the venue had to close, they found out on Monday. The restaurant had to close. So just days before their wedding, they had to make other plans. And it's a good thing people are flexible. A brother got here from California, and he was the Jewish cantor for the wedding service, so we got this couple married. Many things changed, but they still are married. And another couple plans to get married here in June. They contacted me this week to see if they could get married in August. This couple has been planning their wedding for two years. All these details to get the venues, and now they're rescheduling. I know they're disappointed, and I know it is also stressful. I think in some ways we are all suffering, in one way or another. I, for one, do not like change, and it feels like my world has been turned upside down. How about you? A few days ago, it seemed like everything we had planned for April would happen. We were looking forward to it. We were excited. But now those plans can't happen in April. It's disappointing. We have to let go of control and let go of my calendar. Some people get cabin fever having to stay home, and some love it. It just depends how we're wired, how we're made. But even if you love it, it can be stressful because we don't know. And there's so much we don't know. If we'll catch this virus, if someone we love will catch it, if someone we know or love will die from it, I think the not knowing can get to us, as well as hearing so much information about it. Well, I personally don't, do not know anyone who has the coronavirus, but for someone who has it or something similar, they must be asking the question, why? Why me? <clears throat> they are really the ones who are suffering. <clears throat> Our suffering is temporary. No, we don't know how long we'll be quarantined in our homes, except to go to the grocery store and the pharmacy and the doctor. We don't know how long, but it will be temporary in the long run. Someday, someday life will get back to normal. Or maybe even something better than normal, 
because we've all been through this. Maybe we're learning to appreciate each other more or to get along better, to focus on what is really, really important. I encourage us to look for the good because even if we go through something bad, there's always something good. We call them God sightings. So look for some God sightings. Where do you see God around you? Well, I haven't, I've seen God sightings enjoying the birds, listening to them and watching them. Our gospel lesson today is from John 11, about some of Jesus' dearest and closest friends. They were like family, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany. There's no mention of their parents, so we would think that Lazarus had responsibility financially for his sisters. And they were close, as sisters and brothers could be. And Jesus fit in like family, and he enjoyed going to their home. One day when Jesus was across the Jordan River teaching people, he got the message from Mary and Martha that Lazarus was very, very ill. Please come. So he waited a couple days. He said his illness would not lead to death, but God, God would be glorified through it. <clears throat> then Jesus made his way to Bethany, and he knew that Lazarus had died. By the time he got there, it had been four days since he died. Many Jews had come to the home to comfort Mary and Martha. Martha saw Jesus coming, and she ran out to the road to meet him. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again, for I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Then she found her sister Mary. She said, the teacher is here, and he is calling for you. Mary got up quickly and went to Jesus. She found him and knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many times do we ask that same question? Lord, if you had been here, this would not have happened. Lord, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. We may ask that in disappointment, in sorrow, in anger or rage, in sadness or confusion or pain from our broken heart. Well, it's good to know that Jesus saw Mary's tears. He saw Martha's tears. He saw the tears of the Jews around them comforting them, and he was greatly disturbed. And people could see Jesus' tears, too. He said, where have you laid him? They said, come and see. And someone said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus came to the tomb, and it was like a cave with a stone rolled across it. He said, take away the stone. But Martha said, Lord, it's going to stink. He's been there four days. She was concerned about that. And Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so they may believe that you sent me. Then he cried, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, all wrapped up in claws around his body and around his head. Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. The Bible says many of the Jews who had come with Mary and Martha saw the miracle that Jesus did. So many people saw this miracle. And they believed in Jesus. They knew he was the Messiah because of this miracle. So there was a reason, a reason for Lazarus' death. There was a reason for Jesus' delay. At the time, Mary and Martha could not see it. Their hearts were breaking. They were suffering the loss of their beloved brother. When we are suffering, Jesus sees our tears too. He might even be crying with us. He feels our pain. He cares about what we go through, and he is here for us. Jesus knew that Mary and Martha must feel their pain because they had to go through the pain to reach the day of resurrection. They had to go through the pain to reach the day of resurrection. The suffering and the joy they went through had a purpose, and part of it was to prepare them for something they would all go through very soon. So it had a purpose. It was to prepare them. And Jesus knew in a few days his life would be changing dramatically. 
He knew the last week of his life on earth was coming soon. He knew he would have to suffer tremendously and die. But he also knew he would rise again. Whitney Rice says, and I quote, Jesus letting Lazarus die and then calling him back to new life was a gift to Mary and Martha and Lazarus, to the disciples and to us. Jesus knows he is about to go through the same process with much higher stakes and much more pain. He loves them and lets them see there is life after death, not just for him, the Son of Man, but for all people, for regular people, for friends of Jesus, and for us. Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, and he did. Unbind him and let him go. We too can be unbound from our fears, our lies, our grief, and our suffering. Resurrection is freedom, and resurrection is new life. End of quote. So I'd like us to ask us to ourselves, what is binding us? What is holding us back? And can we name it? We can ask Jesus to help us be unbound and free, to let it go. <clears throat> Romans 5 says, God's hope does not disappoint us. Life has its ups and downs, its challenges and opportunities. Sometimes life can be very exciting, and sometimes it can be disappointing. And God has made promises to us. No matter what life throws at us, no matter what suffering we, we might endure, no matter what storms may come our way, Jesus died and rose again to give us the gift of heaven. A young couple adopted two boys, and then they found out they were expecting a baby. They were told they were expecting a baby girl. And Trisha Divings shares her story of suffering. She said there were complications at 18 weeks. At 25 weeks, contractions began way too soon. They had to do an emergency C-section. And she says, our Eliza Grace was born. One and a half pounds, 13 inches long. Tiny, but perfect. We got to meet our daughter and hold her. Then we were told she wouldn't live. She died in my arms when she was just three hours old and into the arms of the Heavenly Father. And Trisha says, I've never really been challenged in my faith until I was standing at the grave of my baby girl. We read in the Bible about lots of Christians and how they have suffered and survived. As Christians, when we suffer, we have a choice to make. To turn to the one who gives and takes away, to turn to Jesus or to turn away from God. And Trisha said, I clung to God. She chose God and she clung to God. She says, those of us who trust in Christ have great hope that God is using our pain to draw us closer to God. So God can use our suffering to bring us closer to God. She says, whatever your stress or suffering may be, whether it's something big that weighs you down, bring it to God. She said her son's storybook, Jesus' storybook Bible, says, Remember that God loves you with a never-stopping, unbreaking, always and forever love. End of quote. May we remember that, that God loves us with a never-stopping, unbreaking, and always and forever love. <clears throat> so let's remember these scriptures from Romans 5. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Someday we'll look back on this and see how we've grown spiritually. So maybe you already journal, and if you don't journal, I invite you to journal just a little bit about what's going on in your life each day. So someday you can look back on this and see how God has answered prayers, how God has given you hope, how God has given us hope. God's hope does not disappoint us. This morning I heard a song Look up, child, reminding me to look up. Let us pray. God, the words of this song help us to pray to you now. We ask, where are you now when darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is crumbling? I know you're in control even in our suffering. Even when it can't be seen, I know you're in control. And I hear you say, look up, child. I hear you calling my name. Oh, look up, child. God, thanks for reminding us to look up to you. 
to trust you, to remember that you are in control. Help us hear you call us by name and help us to look up to you always and forever. Amen. Now it's time for our joys and concerns and prayers. For a big joy, we can still worship together even though we cannot be in church together. For concerns, we remember everybody on our prayer list and Amy Vernon's son, Nolan's grandfather, Greg, who had a heart attack. So Nolan's grandfather, Greg. Ron Hartley, Huntley, I'm sorry. Lisa Kors uncle in the hospital, Ron Huntley. Ruth Blair is on sick leave for two weeks. She doesn't have the coronavirus, but she has a cold and fever sometimes, but I think she was doing better the other day. Janet Woody is home from the hospital. Peg Anderson's granddaughter, Laura, is ill with fever and pneumonia. We pray for all who are, who are ill. We pray for people on our hearts. Let us lift them up in our hearts by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our congregation that we'll be strong through this difficult time, that we reach out to each other by phone calls and texts and emails and cards of encouragement. We pray for all who need your touch, your mercy, your grace. As we deal with the unknown, 
as we do our best to cope with reality. Give us your strength and help us stand in your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we pray for Christians everywhere, for people around the world, for those who are being persecuted and hurt in any way, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those in the medical profession who are giving care to so many people, the doctors and nurses here in our clinic in West Branch, in Iowa City, for our firefighters and first responders. We also lift up their families to keep them all safe and well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our community, the state of Iowa, the United States, and for the whole world, we ask you to guide those who make important decisions and help us always to seek your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. My Jesus, my Savior, of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to work. Shout to the 
join me in the prayer of dedication. O oh God, from your hands come the blessings making life possible. In gratitude and thanks, receive our gifts. May we use these gifts to bless the lives of others, to share the promise of hope and assurance of your love. Amen. You are loved. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you now and forever and always. Amen. <laughs>